January saw the new president spend her first day on the job supporting members at Lincoln University after they were hit with a massive qualification review proposal. It came at a time when there were no students on campus and staff were snowed under preparing for the start of the new semester. The consultation period was very short, but members and TEU staff pulled out all the stops and managed to put together a submission which had a significant impact on the proposal. February saw the election of James Hokamo as Te Tumu Arataki Māori Vice President and the first meetings of our new national committees and council. Richard Handley, CEO of the Western Institute of Technology in Taranaki, did not get his contract renewed. Richard was one of the few Polytechnic chief executives who spoke out against the funding cuts that in impacted on the sector. Richard was highly respected by staff, students and the community. March was a busy month. We had members at Nelson Marlborough Institute of Technology hold a stop work meeting to protest against their employer's pay offer at bargaining. Massey members held a bullying and harassment workshop. We celebrated International Women's Day and Unitech members hosted the Women's Fiesta. Work started on the blueprint with members providing input at branch workshops. We had the Branch Presidents Forum in Wellington and Hui Amotu at Ōnuku Marae in beautiful Akaroa where the TEU Te Reo policy discussion began. April saw Stephen Joyce announce a review of PBRF and also the release of individual PBRF quality categories to participating institutions. It also saw government cut 29 million of funding to Polytechs. In May, the Living Wage campaign started to gather momentum. We almost got Massey University to sign up, but the Vice-Chancellor got cold feet and did a U-turn. The budget, as predicted, did nothing to improve the health of tertiary education. Student allowance entitlement was cut to three years for over 40-year-olds and over 65-year-olds had their entitlement removed. Students returning from overseas now face the prospect of being stopped at the border if they owe money to the government. Council was held on Taputeranga Marae in Island Bay and it was uplifting for council members to learn about its creation from Bruce Stewart. The fantastic work that is done by REAPs is not well publicised. Leslie visited the Tairawhiti REAP members to learn more about what they do for their communities and to help raise their profile. In June, the proposed changes to the Employment Relations Act had its first reading. The implications of the changes were being discussed by unionists across the country. There was great news for members at the University of Auckland when TEU won a court case against the institution. Branch President Paul Tayon did a fantastic job representing University of Auckland members during the case. In July, members and staff across the country threw themselves into writing submissions on the proposed employment law changes, with a large number of them requesting to make a submission to the Select Committee. We had our very successful General Staff Day with participating institutions releasing General Staff for an extended lunchtime. A survey was sent out to members to gather data on the issue of casualisation and we got almost 2,000 responses. Wellingtonians got a taste of what contemporaries have had to live with when we experienced a sizeable earthquake. August saw rallies across the country protesting against the employment law changes and the proposal to allow GCSB to spy on us. We had the biennial CTU Women's Conference with our Women's Officer Suzanne McNabb as co-convener. A major victory in the fight against casualisation was won at Fitirea, when 30 staff had their employment status changed to permanent. TEU sent a delegation to the triennial COPE conference in Fiji. In September, Central Plateau REAPs achieved a good pay settlement. TEU members, along with other unionists and concerned citizens, started to deliver their submissions on the employment law changes. Reviews continued to impact on members, this time at North Tech and their Bachelor of Applied Arts program. October saw the last of the National Committee meetings and the new structures firmly embedded. The proposal to change the composition of University and Wānanga councils was announced. Te Kaupapa Whaioranga, the blueprint for tertiary education, was completed.